Update 2.1, New Power, has brought a lot of changes to naval battles. It's probably the largest update in naval's history, though whether it's good or not is another matter. So, what's the overall effect it's had on the mode? This video will be going over the patch notes for the update, covering major changes and giving some analysis and opinions on them. Let's start from the beginning of the patch notes. The first large change for Enable is to Enduring Confrontation. AI vessels have had some AA guns removed to reduce lag. This isn't a perfect solution to the lag issue, but hopefully it will reduce it some. Of course, Gaijin needs to actually give us EC to test that. The next change is also one in EC. Ports now have torpedo nets, meaning that ships won't spawn in and instantly be killed by a cross-map torpedo. This may also keep people from spamming torpedoes outside of a port while inside it, which is another very welcome change. Of course, this again requires Gaijin to give us EC to actually test it. Next up are some changes to naval weaponry. I won't cover each change, but I will cover the more notable ones. The Chidori and Mitsuki got SAP, which is a surprisingly good shell on them, and should increase their overall damage output. It doesn't lose very much filler, so it's probably better against anything frigate size and up than the HE shell. The Shimakaze's Type 93 Model 1 torpedoes were swapped for Type 93 Model 3 torpedoes. They have much more filler, but less range. The Model 3 torpedoes are generally considered a lot better, so it's a slight buff. The Graf Spee had its accuracy improved. It's certainly better than it was before the patch, and is one of the only cruisers that can actually provide a threat to the new dreadnoughts in a gun duel. Its accuracy still isn't great, but now it's good enough to be competitive. Next is the reload of the Mitsuki and Chidori being increased from 6 RPM to 10 RPM. That's a huge increase to their damage output, and paired with their new SAP shell, it makes them much stronger than they were before. Two of the Italian light cruisers got reserved torpedoes. This takes their total carried from 4 to 8. It doesn't do very much, but it is nice for more ships to get their torpedo reloads. Last up for weapons changes is the addition of torpedo depth settings, which is a pretty huge change. At a 4 meter depth, they'll pretty much one-shot anything they hit. Once cruisers and dreadnoughts are present, the 4 meter depth setting will almost always be superior, since it won't fail to fuse on a target that large and will almost always one-shot them. It's pretty much required to kill dreadnoughts too, since their belts can absorb all the damage from a 1 meter depth torpedo. The torpedoes automatically set themselves to the optimal depth needed in Arcade 2. Overall, this seems like a good feature. The next change is the largest change to gameplay in the update. Ship crews have been redistributed to different locations, and destroying a module kills the crew in it. When the module is destroyed, the crew in it is killed, and when the module is repaired, crew from other sections are moved into it. The main issue with this is the first part. The crew redistribution has made everything much less survivable. The crew of all cruisers seems to be pushed against the walls of the hull, meaning that high explosive shells are far more powerful than they were before. As far as gameplay goes, this change is terrible. Everything is incredibly squishy now, and damage models are very inconsistent. Another similar change that's not listed in the patch notes is a drastic increase to ammo detonation chances, making combat with all ship classes very random and hyper-lethal. The time to kill in naval has, again, changed so drastically that the mode is almost unrecognizable. This seems to be a trend with Gaijin, with every update having such major changes to naval damage models, that the mode changes completely. This change, and some others that came to naval damage models, have had so many negative effects that I'm going to have to make a full video going over the specifics of it and why it makes no sense later. The next change is that pumps can be damaged, slowing pumping time to a quarter of its max speed at the worst. This has made sinking a bit more of a threat, but it still very rarely happens, and even if it does, it's more from the timer counting down to leaving the vehicle from excessive rolling than actually hitting 0% flotation. Overall, this one hasn't really changed much. Next up comes the changes to physics and damage models. Coal bunkers were set to have an effectiveness of 27 millimeters of steel per one meter of coal, which isn't really a change since that's their first implementation, but it is in the patch notes anyway. They seem a little inconsistent, but do significantly add to the survivability of the new dreadnoughts. Up next is a reduction to the rolling caused by large shells and explosives. This was needed, considering a rocket barrage from the PR-35 could completely roll over destroyers, which seemed just a little bit excessive. The other changes to physics and damage models are pretty minor, as well as the visual ones not really being notable. The only interface change is moving the AI firing mode indicator from the X-ray view to the toolbar. It looks a bit worse than it did before, but it does make it very obvious what button controls the firing mode, so it's fine overall. The last change is probably the most notable one of the update, the splitting of the naval research trees. 
It's brought in a lot of new players since destroyers are now a reserve vehicle, which is absolutely excellent. The massive reductions to RP costs and the increases to SL gain are also great. Of course, there are some cons to these changes too. First off, 1.0 to 2.0 are a ghost town, and 2.3 and up for the coastal fleet are just up to your bait. Some are still viable, like the 4.0 and 4.3 vessels, but most of them are even more expensive than they were before. Worse yet, these coastal fleet vessels are the ones that win matches due to their cap points, and most players don't have them and aren't interested in unlocking them. The need for changes to naval game modes with larger ships has never been as bad as it is now. Nothing was done to address naval severe compression either. It's much worse now due to the dreadnoughts and reserve destroyers. In the Blue Water Fleet, there's not a single BR that does not face either reserves or top tier. 4.7 can face the Type 1924 Leopard, and 5.0s can face Dreadnoughts. Each vehicle's effectiveness is decided purely by its matchmaking, unless it's a top tier vehicle, in which case it's always on top. Premiums also lost tons of value. Let's say, previously, a player bought the USS Cowl. It could grind up to the USS Brooklyn, and could unlock 25 vehicles. Now, it can only grind up to the USS Cleveland, and can only unlock 10 vehicles. Another example would be the Prince Eugen. Previously, it could unlock all 32 German ships. Now it can only unlock 15. The value of every premium vehicle was about halved or worse. Even premiums in the coastal fleet that got moved up in tier aren't able to research as many vehicles as they could before. Really, the tree split is mixed. It's overall good for new players, bad for premium owners, and did nothing to fix Naval's compression issues. I prefer it to how it was before since Naval's biggest issue was the lack of players, but it really could have been implemented much better than this. Overall, this patch is a mixed bag. The economy changes are mostly good, but the balance changes are some of the worst that Naval has ever received. I'm glad more players can get into the mode easily, but the actual gameplay is just so much worse than it was before. All I can hope is that Gaijin reverts the damage model changes and does something about the compression, since if they don't, we'll probably wind up with Naval in a similar state to where it was before this update. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more Naval content.